Hello, and welcome back to Fun with Stats. And you can see that it's fun because there's a fun giraffe, and giraffes are always fun. Um, okay, so in this video, I will continue talking about the bivariate normal distribution. In the previous video, I talked about the conditional expectation. And in this video, I'm talking about conditional variance for two normal correlated random variables. Uh, so suppose we have two normally distributed random variables, um, Z1 and Z2, and we'll use them to generate a bivariate normal distribution. So Z1 and Z2 are here both normally distributed with mean 0 and variance of 1, and Z1 and Z2 are independent, so they're not correlated. Uh, but we can use them for generating two correlated normal random variables with parameters um, u x, mu y, sigma x, sigma y, and rho. Rho is the correlation coefficient. So let's construct x by using z1. Uh, here mu x and sigma x are just some numbers. And we construct y by using z1 and z2. And, and let's construct uh, y by using both z1 and z2. So you can see that uh, both x and y depend on z2, and that's a way to make them uh, correlated. So in constructing y, we're using parameters mu y, uh, sigma y, and rho, which is the coefficient of correlation between x and y. Um, yeah, and these are just some numbers that we select. So I mean, this is just a picture for the probability density function for a bivariate normal distribution. I mean, here we would like have x, and here we have y, and this picture represents, we could calculate the volume of some part um, to find the probability of x and y being in that range that we selected. Well, and this is the cumulative density function for x and y. Uh, this is just an example when we have rho equal to 0.6. So let's just check uh, what are the marginal distributions of the new variables that we created of x and y. So x equals mu x plus sigma x times z1. Mu x and sigma x are just some numbers, and z1 is normally distributed random variable. So z1 here is normally distributed, and this is just a linear transformation of z1. Therefore, we can um, know that x is also normally distributed with mean mu x, and this is the variance of x. And y, here we go, is constructed from both z1 and z2. Uh, z1 and z2 are both normally um, normally distributed, and uh, they're independent. So actually, we obtain this distribution, and therefore we can say that y is also normally distributed, because it's just a linear combination of two normally distributed independent variables. So y is also normally distributed with mean mu y and uh, variant sigma y squared. So both x and y are normally distributed random variables, but they're not necessarily independent, while z1 and z2 are independent. So uh, in the previous video, I calculated the conditional expectation of y given x but now we want to determine the conditional variance of y given x. Uh, because remember, both x and y depend on the random variables at 1, so they could be correlated, um, well, depending on the value of rho. So uh, to compute the variance of y given the value of x, we substitute the expression for y, which is this, and this is all conditional on x taking on value uh, small x. Well, uh, x equals mu x plus sigma x times that one. Well, this should be a value. Um, yeah, it's not a random variable, it's a value. So then we can compute from that that z1 must equal x minus mu x divided by sigma x. Uh, therefore, we can now substitute this expression instead of z1. So here uh, we substitute instead of z1, and now we need to compute the variance of this expression conditional on x.
Well, first uh, we can open the bracket, so we have to multiply both terms by sigma y, and this is what I'm doing here. And then, if you notice, this term is constant, it's just a number. This term is also constant, because, well, x here is just a value. Remember, we're looking at the case x equals to x, so small x is a value, um, and only this term contains a random variable set 2. Well, remember that the variance of a constant is zero, so we can actually get rid of these terms, and therefore we're just left with the variance of this expression uh, conditional on x. Well, here we only have um, z2, the random variable, uh, but remember that x equals u x plus sigma x times z1, so it does not depend at all on um, z2, and z2 does not depend on x, so z2 is independent of x, they're not correlated. Uh, therefore, I remember that variance of z2 conditional on x equals just variance of z2 um, if z2 and x are independent. So here we have variance of some uh, term multiplied by a random variable. Well, we end up, um, so variance of a times x equals a squared variance of x. Therefore, this term gets squared, so that's how we obtain sigma y squared times y minus rho squared, and this is times times variance of z2, which equals 1, so that's how we obtain this term, because this is just times 1. And as you notice, what is this telling us? Well, as rho, the correlation coefficient of between x and y increases, the, vari the conditional variance of y given x decreases. So, for example, if rho was equal to 1, then this term uh, would be 0, and therefore the conditional variance would be 0, and that makes sense, because if y and x are perfectly correlated, and x takes on a value of x, well, then we know there's only one value that y would take, uh, because y is some kind of um, function of x. Therefore, there would be no variance. Like There would be no conditional variance, it would be zero. And as rho decreases, uh, the conditional variance of y given x increases. So if rho is zero, we would just obtain sigma y squared, uh, which again makes sense because that would be just variance of y equals sigma y squared. Uh, it would not depend on, well, if rho would be zero, it would not depend on rho.